Hello folks, Dallas here with Privateer Press. Today, we're gonna to take a simple cork and turn it into a unique and awesome base for our minis. Let's get started. So we're gonna build a base, and as you can see here on our cool little deathless, we got a cool little base here. It's kind of dope, it's got a little top. It looks like maybe a busted ruin or, you know, chapel or something that he's hanging out on being all menacing. So we're gonna build that. So the tools we'll be using is of course a base, and I have some cork here, and this is available pretty much anywhere. It's easy to find. I got some thin styrene, plastic uh, styrene. And of course I got my uh, trusty P3 hobby knife and clippers. Might not use the clippers, but you never know. Good to have laying around. I've got my P3 super glue and I got a couple of just, I got some skulls um, and you can use whatever you want. These are just gonna be a little accoutrements or decorations, whatever's appropriate for your project. So let's get right into the build. The first thing I'm gonna do is I need to measure my styrene and I need to get a footprint for you know, the model that I'm gonna be working on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of draw a larger shape than I need. Very rough shape with my knife. I'm gonna just pop that out. Making a base. It goes over there. And that kind of fills the whole base. And I don't really want that. So I'm gonna trim this down and start getting refining the shape I want. So maybe trim this away, like so. Maybe bring this over here. Maybe have a dip in the front, kind of like a kidney bean. So you need the plastic card to be smaller than the base. That way when the cork goes under it, you get a natural slope or bevel, whatever you're going for but the plastic needs to be big enough for the footprint of whatever miniature you're gonna place on it. That's a much better footprint. This gives me a little open space up here and that'll be where any decorations I want go and also gives me room for the cork. Something like that, that seems pretty good. So the next step I like to do is now we need to shape this and refine it much tighter. So I'm gonna use the edge of my blade, I'm gonna Remove the sharp edge of the plastic and start refining that shape. Maybe here, I wanna cut in like a little triangle, like a little, like it's been damaged over time. Just eons of wear and tear. Something like that maybe. I really want some damage on this. You can get real careless here. Just really let the knife do some damage on your base. There we go. And of course this is messy, but that's okay. I just want that beveled edge. Just keep working it Do you feel like it's nice and damaged. You could even maybe etch in a little line, like a crack. And if you wanted to, you can put a hole in it. Spin this. I'm gonna cut this out, make it like a little chunk that's been busted out maybe. Maybe have some cracks coming off of it. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So I've got a few pieces of plastic card in the kind of shape I kind of want. So the next step will be applying these to the cork and cutting that out. So let's do that. So on the bottom side, not the top where I did all my cool work, on the bottom side, I'm just gonna put some glue. I'm just gonna stick that right to the cork, just like so, and let that dry. Okay, so now we gotta cut out our cork. So for that, we're just gonna get a rough shape. We're just gonna rip that up. So I'm just breaking just to, just to be fast. And also gives it a rougher edge and irregularities that you want because this is supposed to be broken stone or whatever. 
So now I'm going to use my knife. I'm just going to start cutting away a little bit here. Let's kind of nick this up. Get a little rougher look in there. Get that broken look. Okay, let's glue this down. Just get a good placement. Pinch it down. Glue that one on there. Just get it where you want. I like taking these little chunks, natting them around. They kind of look like bigger pieces of broken masonry. Let's go ahead and put our skull in there. Push this over here. Right there. Drop our skull in there. Whoops. Okay, let's let our super glue dry before we move on to the next step. So for our final step, we're just gonna take some mixing medium and some ballast and we're gonna apply it to the base and that way we give us something really cool to paint. So shake up our mixing medium. And I'm just gonna squirt some on here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Maybe some back here. Some over here, maybe some up there. I'm gonna use our brush to kind of push this around. Anywhere where I want ballast, I'm just gonna have some mixing medium there so it's the ballast sticks. And just kind of dip that in there. Shake off the excess. And sometimes I like a little, maybe some dirt up here. Whoa! If you get too much, just use your brush. Maybe a little sprinkle, just for texture. And if you missed any spots, you can go back and apply a little bit more. I like burying the skulls a little bit. It makes them look older. They're smashed into the earth. Then we can use our hobby knife and remove any extra around the edge. The more texture, the better. So this looks pretty good. It's exactly what I was going for. And the next step is just to apply our miniature, prime it up, and give it a paint job. So we got this guy all finished up, and as you can see, all the same techniques have been applied to this base, including the little skull. Our base is now of texture, style, and personality. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe for more videos, and check out the links below for more in this series, and additional information on the P3 Hobby Line. You know the best outtakes? Tony. 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 You sound like you're having an award-based stroke. Tony. Grammy.